love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Today we'll talk about pets and pet ownership in Soviet Union. First of all, right away, I want to tell you, if you are a pet lover, you might want to stop right here and don't listen to the end of this program because I'm going to tell you some information that you might not going to like uh, about pet ownership in Soviet Union. But this is what uh, was happening uh, in the countryside and I don't want to hide it. I just thinking it's pretty important for people to know how the things were going with pet ownership in the Soviet Union. So uh, I warned you and now we go to our story. First of all, I would like to tell you that uh, we never had a pet. Um, I remember when I was maybe five or six years old, I for some reason decided, okay, I would like to have a dog, you know, like a lot of little kids. Um, they maybe saw a movie or something, they see, you know, kids with a dog and they like feel like they want a dog. So I actually remember that moment when I asked my mom if I can have a doggy. And my mom, bless her heart, uh, answered me really simply, well, if we're going to get a dog, you will be the one who's going to pick up his poop. And for some reason, the whole idea of picking up dog's crap uh, was so unattractive to me. So it killed it right away on the spot. And I never, ever asked again my mom about having a pet, um, like having a dog. And later... Um, in my life, I had a couple experience, bad experiences with dogs, and I already told you about one when I was probably about even younger, like maybe four or five. I got scared really badly by dog back in the village when I stayed with my grandparents, and that's when uh, I was taken to the old lady who whispered a, a prayer in my ear, and it took care of that problem. So that was the first time when I really got scared by the dog. Second time, uh, we were walking from school, so I was probably about uh, eight or seven years old, so that was first or second grade. Uh, I was walking with my friends from school. Uh, we at that time attended afternoon school. Uh, since we had more kids than uh, available rooms in school, uh, they split the classes, so several classes were going to school in the afternoon, so... Same teachers were teaching, but, uh, you know, kids going in the morning, and then uh, some kids were going for the same classes in the afternoon. Cause, so we were coming home about 5 or 6 p.m., and there was a small um, orchard next to our school. So I guess it used to be maybe a little farm or something, and then when they developed that area, the orchard remained as a part of school. So we were walking with my friends uh, from school, and there were some uh, guys, I don't know, maybe in their 20s or 30s, younger guys, they were drinking in the orchard, which was quite a popular uh, way of people spending time. They would just find a like location with uh, militia, you know, Soviet cops won't see you. Just have a little spread, some snacks and some drinks, wine or maybe beer or maybe vodka. And they just, you know, drink and talk. And they had a bulldog with them. And I guess they were so drunk that they decided it would be fun uh, to tell the dog to chase us. And I remember my horror because I'm racing through the orchard screaming Bloody Mary with that uh, bulldog chasing after us. I got lucky. I managed to climb the tree, the apple tree, and the dog couldn't get me. But he got a f my friend Valera and bit him really bad on the calf. So that experience of being horrified, being chased by the dog, really kind of killed the, any desire to own a pet, uh, like for me personally. When we finally made home, uh, we told our parents, uh, parents called police, militia, you dial 02, free phone call if you remember. Uh, so militia came 
and they located this people, located the dog owner. He lived in the building next to us, and then they brought uh, that special pet service and actually took a dog away and put him down. And I think the guy paid the fee, some kind of fine uh, for that kind of behavior. But as I said, this is my own experience uh, why I never liked dogs and dogs didn't like me because they felt my fear. So from those days, you know, I want a dog and my mama told me about the dog poop and then I got scared by the dog was really bad. So we never had uh, pets in our family. Later, when I was already maybe like 15 or so, uh, we purchased the aquarium, so I had some fishes. And also, uh, some relatives of my dad, um, they had a turtle, small turtle that they wanted to get rid of, so they gave it to us as a present. So we had the turtle maybe for about a year, um, but we didn't have a special box or nothing for it, so that thing was crawling all over our apartment. And uh, it was taking a dump in, in the most inaccessible spaces. So we finally got tired and we got rid of it. So this is a, my family experience of owning the pets. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my grandparents used to have a dog back in the village. But uh, the dog died before my time. So I don't remember uh, my grandparents owning the dog. But my mom told me this story. So they had a dog and as pretty much all the people in the country who had a pet and there was quite a few people who had dogs but they had them for a purpose to kind of like protect the property uh, not exactly to bite people but uh, there will be a dog house uh, Sabachia Budka outside and a dog will be on the chain live in that uh, box wooden box and then of course if they hear somebody sneaking into the air you know will be a tall fence around the uh, building, the house. So they'll be barking, you know, warning the owners that somebody is in the area. So quite a few people in the village, I recall, had uh, a dog for that reason. So if you walk on the street, you know, every time you walk past the dvor, we call it the area where the dog is, you can hear it's barking and a chain will be clanking. Um, but apparently the dog that my grandparents owned, um, its name was Tobik. I guess he was too noisy, he was bothering neighbors. So one time uh, they tossed a piece of meat over the fence and dog ate it. But they put uh, sewing needles inside of the meat. So the dog uh, bled from inside and died. So this is kind of a sad story about the dog that my grandparents owned. But as I mentioned, the only reason people had a dog in the villages is for protection, uh, to warn about uh, thieves. They didn't have it as a pet inside of the house. Even in the winter, maybe if they, in the winter, like days were really cold or nights, they'll let him inside of the house. Otherwise, dog always lived outside in his, its own little um, dog house. Same thing with the cats. Uh, People had cats in the villages, and my grandparents uh, had a cat, uh, so it will catch mice. So it wasn't just, you know, like a pet to pet a cat, have it as a little, you know, toy or something that calms you down. They had the cat, so it will take care of rod rodents. And now this story that I warned you about, if you are sensitive about pets, you might want to skip it a couple of minutes. But the thing is, we didn't have vets like who take care of, of the pets. We had a veterinarian in the collective farm, but that person was taking care of cows and horses, maybe goats, but they didn't work with dogs or cats. So the, which means no one would, uh, I'm trying to think about correct word, uh, nurture, but you don't castrate dogs or cats. So they were stray, right? Is that you say it? So, they will multiply. So uh, my grandma had a, a female cat, Koshka. In Russian, we have two different words. Male cat is a kot. Female cat is Koshka. So my grandma had a female cat, Koshka. And of course, every time when she is in heat, there will be a nightmare because all the male cats will gather from the neighborhood and they'll be all, you know, making loud noises and chasing and 
fighting. And then, of course, uh, my grandma's cat will get pregnant. And, of course, you could see that she becomes bigger. And that's the moment when my grandma started watching her cat really carefully because she needed to find where she going to give her birth. That was a really critical moment. As I said, cats would impregnate cats. And uh, so when she gives the birth, my grandma uh, will go and she will take the kittens. And of course, if any one of the neighbors needed a cat, she'll give them a free kitten. Otherwise, she'll take uh, kittens when they're still tiny and blind and she'll grab a shovel and she'll walk out uh, in the fields and dig the hole and she'll dig the hole and bury those kittens while they're still alive uh, because there was no other way of dealing with uh, overpopulation of cats since no one castrated cats that's what every household had to deal with if you don't uh, watch your cat, female cat then next thing you have five cats next thing you have 20 cats so that's what people did in the villages uh, my grandma was burying them other people would have like a some kind of bag and they just put kids in there uh, tied the rope in the brick and toss it in a river so the kittens in the villages in the Ukraine and Russia were or buried alive or drowned and that was how the pet control uh, was uh, performed uh, in the villages so it's pretty when I told my kids and my mom they got so uh, my mom my uh, wife they got so disturbed with this information but I was like well you know what is more appropriate thing to do or castrate your pet so then he will never have fun for the rest of his life so he's just kind of this toy pet or you know, cat enjoying life, but then you have a side effect, you have unwanted kittens that you're trying to get rid of. So for my grandma being a you know, female, you have a you need to have a quite a willpower to bury these little tiny cute creatures, but she said it was really important to get them before they're still blind and tiny and she won't feel that bad as when they already kinda like aware what's going on and look at you while you tossing the dirt over their tiny bodies. So that's what uh, uh, pets that people in the villages had, dogs and cats. But as I said, they had them not as a toys, not like pets. They had them for the purpose of guarding the house or chasing rodents. And uh, during the Soviet Union, uh, villagers uh, weren't allowed to own horses. So like here in America, you know, there's people who own horses for fun because they love horses. Uh, only... Collective farm itself had horses and people had to borrow them for the, uh, like planting potatoes. So you need, if you need to till your, um, garden, of course, it's too much work to do by hand. So you borrow a horse and a plow and you till your garden, then you plant potatoes and other things. But otherwise, uh, people weren't al allowed to have their own horse. Um, in the city, it was a little bit different situation, but I personally don't remember many pets uh, while I was growing up. Uh, for example, I don't recall any of my friends owning a dog. I think maybe one or two had a cat, but not a single friend of mine, and I had a, quite a few friends, owned a dog in the city. And I think one of the reasons, besides people didn't have a lot of money, uh, also, both parents had to work, so you leave your pet in a tiny apartment all day long. So, of course, dog or a cat will can, you know, create problems. And then, problem with feeding, uh, we never had pet food. I don't remember ever uh, that you can just go and buy some dog food or cat food. Uh, no litter boxes, nothing like that. So, people just give dogs scraps of meat you know off the table i know cats always like milk so you give them cow milk but uh, since was no way of buying pet food then you leave a dog pretty much starving all day or leave them alone so as i said there was not many people i recall in kiev uh, that own a dog and uh, another thing why i remember so well that we didn't have many dogs in kiev during the Soviet Union because it became really popular to own a dog 
uh, after collapse of Soviet Union and the people who started uh, earning good money, there was kind of like this standard procedure. If you started, uh, you got some good job or, you know, you doing well for yourself, first thing, uh, you buy a leather jacket for you and for your wife. Then you buy a pet, you buy a dog, and usually buy a mean dog, like a pit bull, a bulldog. Uh, so those nasty, sharp teeth, really aggressive dogs. So that was kind of a popular thing. And then we had an issue, since no one would pick up after their dogs, uh, in the spring especially, they'll be horrible. Like, you're afraid to walk anywhere where the grass is because it was just littered with the dog's crap. And it's still a big problem now in, in Kiev and Moscow. The pet owners, there's no culture of, you know, carrying a baggie with you and pick up the, the crap after your dog. So I don't remember the issues with the dog crap before. So this is kind of tells me that that's right. There was not many people who owned the pets. Usually there'll be retirees, like old lady that uh, maybe her husband passed away and she feeling lonely. Then maybe she'll give a tiny doggy or a cat as a companion. But people who worked every day, busy families, they just didn't have dogs because they just had no reason for it. Um, you could purchase fish like we had pet stores so called zoo magazine so it's like a zoology store zoo magazine i had several in kiev i recall at least two that i went when i uh, had an aquarium and the fishes so you could buy fish there and some uh, food for your fish or you can buy aquarium and supplies but uh, kiev as well as moscow had so called bird market ptichi bazaar and it's where uh, people like private people would sell all kind of pets and fish and other animals so that was really fun to go there and actually i hope if i go to kiev again to visit my parents actually to go back to the bird market and film it because there'll be dogs for sale cats for sale guinea pigs birds uh, all kind of things uh, and of course, people will be making their own special devices for fe- the feeders and uh, all kind of things, uh, different size fish tanks. Uh, so it was always fun to go there. And some people will be making money by raising special worms uh, to feed fish. You couldn't buy those at the store, but you could buy those at the uh, bird market. So that'll be my uh, bi-weekly trip to go to the bird market and then you buy these worms uh, for your fish and sometimes if you have extra fish you can try even to sell it to someone who sits there every day and it's open air market so in the winter those guys have to do some special uh, setups to keep their fish tanks warm and keep their fishes warm so that was pretty interesting how they you know sit on the in the jackets and the, uh, those uh, ushanka hats it has a little propane tanks and the flames going to keeping the fish alive and warm. Uh, so that was a quite a challenge in the cold, cold winter days to have a fish tanks with fish in it in the open air. Uh, those guys deserve a lot of kudos for doing that. And another thing that really surprised me here in the United States is that people keep uh, rabbits as pets. Uh, we only had rabbits. People had them in the cages and they raised them for their skins to make like fur hats and for their meat so people eat rabbit meat Um, there was only reason people had rabbits so the fact that people had rabbit inside of the house as a pet was a total shock for me Um, another reason I believe why we didn't have that many pets like dogs in Soviet Union that we didn't have this I almost call it conspiracy here in America uh, because it sounds like someone paying money to Hollywood and to magazines because the standard picture of the happy American, perfect happy American family, you know, there'll be a, a two kids or three kids, you know, a boy and a girl, and of course should be a doggy. So it's like from the day one, from early on, it's uh, being put in the people's brains like, if you want to have a happy family, you have to have a dog. You have to have a dog. And like my kids, 
we end up having a dog right now. I have a tiny Yorkie. As much as I uh, didn't want us to have a dog, I fought really hard. But in the end, we got this Yorkie that lived with us for about seven years now. It's a cute dog, but it's totally useless. And the amount of money we spend on it is just astounding because, you know, he uh, messed up carpet in, in twice. So that was, a uh, you know, quite a few dollars to replace carpet and uh, had a broken leg. That cost a lot of money to fix and all the food and vet services. So he probably, it cost us, I think, $600 to purchase a dog and the dang thing probably cost us another $3,000 in this seven years to own it. And uh, no one wants to play with it. No one wants to take it for a walk. Uh, all the kids and my wife were all excited to have a t- pet. Well, once you had a pet, it's like no one interested with it anymore. So in Soviet Union, we didn't have that propaganda about happy Soviet family must have a dog. So I think that's one another reason why people really didn't care about owning the dog. So this is my short uh, pet story. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, we'll talk to you soon again. Our next topic about fishing in Soviet Union. Don't forget to put the like on this video if you really liked it. Uh, don't forget to share with your friends and the social media. And as always, we appreciate your support. Uh, you can uh, sign up on Patreon.com or just uh, send some money via PayPal uh, to support this channel. Thank you very much, comrades, and we'll talk to you later.